I've got something I want to share with you. Hopefully this will inspire some action. Do you remember when Columbine happened? That terrible, terrible tragedy in our school where school kids were killed by another school kid. After that happened, an army of therapists, first responders and other professionals rushed on stage to help those kids, predominantly white school kids. Then Paducah, Kentucky, same thing. An army of professionals rushed on stage to help those kids deal with the trauma as it should have been. Well, who's helping us to deal with our trauma? There's no army rushing to our aid. In fact, you have a portion of an army steadily trying to kill us. Policy enforcers who call themselves police officers. Not all police officers are like this. So I'm not talking about the good ones, but we don't know the difference between the good cops and the bad cops. So I'm just putting this out there because our people are dying because we don't know the difference. So when I think about our people, the 17 year old who, whose video footage was featured in the Derek Chauvin, the murderer trial the most, did we have an army of therapists or professionals rushing on stage to try to help her? I don't know, I didn't hear about it. And all those people, well, I, like most black people, we're just trying to deal with it, trying to make it through to another day and achieve some level of success so we can have some level of safety and comfort about living life just as humans. And so we just sort of push the real issue to the side because we don't have time to deal with it. You got to get up and go to work the next day. I got to work the next deal, right? We got to keep going because we can't stop. We don't think we can stop. But two things happened that made me stop and pay attention. One, I love following Snoop Dogg. Snoop D-O-double-G on Instagram. His, his posts are funny, they're informative, and uh, love watching him grow into grandpahood, as it were, <laughs> okay? Uh, just love watching it, and he's always high, of course. <laughs> um, love watching his posts. Now, Snoop, posted one of the videos of the, the military guy who was being utterly molested by the racist white cops up in Virginia. And Snoop said these words in his post. He said, man, this hurts so bad. It knocked something loose on the inside of me. I knew it did. Didn't know exactly what it was, but it was very powerful and I knew it was. The next thing that happened was watching a part of the murder trial, Derek Chauvin murderer trial, and seeing the elderly gentleman, the older gentleman with the goldish, brownish suit, take his glasses off, weep like a little boy and bang on the desk. He didn't even know George Floyd. And that's when it came all the way loose. And then I was able to look at it. You know what it was? the truth that my whole family, black people all over the world, we are traumatized by the violence, the neglect, the, eh, it's not that bad. Cops killing our people and then going home and eating dinner with their wives. Cops killing our people and then uh, being celebrated at work. We see, we see it all the time. Our whole community is traumatized. And it became very real to me at a deep, deep level. So, and of course there's no army of professionals rushing to our aid, not at all. The legislators are taking their precious sweet old time about passing laws to protect us while they did not do that for the Asians. Asians ought to be protected like everyone else. Just mere weeks after the angry white man massacred Asians in two massage parlors in Atlanta. There are laws on the books now. It has been hundreds of years of abuse by police. We're still trying to, we're still grappling with police reform. So nobody's gonna come to our aid, folks. So this is what I made this video for. I'm gonna put out a call. Nobody can heal the wounded soul like a black voice. Nobody can do that. Everybody knows that. Our voices bring something to the world no other group of voices brings. A healing, a soothing, an empowerment, an inspiring 
that no other group can bring. It's unique to us. So this is my vision. This is what I am hoping for. That our top artists and even middle, some of the middle rated artists would come together in a kind of a we are the world style presentation and write three or four songs specifically to heal our people, black artists. Black artists, my namesake, Lionel Richie, penned We Are The World. And artists from all over, amazing artists from all over the world came to one place and they performed that amazing piece of music, We Are The World. We need that. I, I, I am envisioning, and I can't name everybody who I'd like to see a part of this, but I wanna give you a sampling for the women, the matriarchs, of course, Beyonce. Her, wow, Jennifer Hudson, Fantasia, Ella May from the UK. There's an artist in Africa who goes by the name Simi. Women like that, sing to us like you would your children when they're disturbed, when they're traumatized by something that happened at school, traumatized by something that happened. Sing to us something sweet, something nurturing that can heal our people. And then the, the crooners come in, the male crooners, the patriarchs come in, the crooners like, like Jamie Foxx, <laughs> wow, Tyrese, right? John Legend and Tank, bringing those sweet, smooth, masculine voices to the game. And while the moms, the matriarchs are comforting the babies, the, mate, the patriarchs, the men come in and they comfort the mamas. And then that makes the babies feel more secure. And then when we've moved through maybe the tears and the anguish and cry out some of this pain and this trauma that we're holding in our bodies, when the mothers sing, the matriarchs sing, and then the fathers come along and soothe it with comfort, healing and strength. Then we move into the generals who create music and artistry that will inspire us to stand up, throw our shoulders back, hold our heads up, and march to a new cadence. Men like Jay-Z, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube. And you're not doing this without Rick Ross, the boss, and his beat billionaire. You're not doing it without Timbaland on the board. And those just are just samples of the artists who can come together and we need this. In the We Are The World presentation that my namesake Lionel Richie pinned and all these artists came together, that was a great piece of music. But true to form, Lionel is one of us. And when he wrote that piece, like all of our works, it was multi-level. It had many, many dimensions. See if these words fit this moment right now. We are the world. We are the children. We, not the legislators, they're gonna take forever to do this. Not the police reform, it's gonna take forever. We are the ones to make a brighter day. Just you and me. There's a choice we are making. We're saving our own lives. It's true, we make a better day. Just you and me. I wanna see this. I wanna see this. Because this is a special place and a special time. I'm not an artist, I don't sing like they do, but this is what comes out of my trauma. In this special place, there's quite enough love. In this place, there's so much love in this place, love in this place. And at this sacred time, there's quite enough love to soothe. There's so much love to soothe the broken heart. 
how would people need our help to help us to therapeutically get through this, spiritually get through this, mentally get through this, and soulishly get through this in every other way. And nobody can do it like us. I used to be mad at the responders and the therapists, but here's the truth. They're not really qualified to help us. We are such a big and powerful people, nobody has the bandwidth to do it but us. Lest I need this for me, I need this for my babies, I need this for my community, I need this for my family all over the world. A We Are The World project to heal, specifically to heal black people. I would love to see it.